Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel once again. So I know I haven't had a lot of content out recently. Trust me, I have a lot of stuff shot. I just need to edit it and put it out. Um, but behind me, this sea of engines here kind of explains what's going on here at the shop. So we're overrun with engine jobs, lots of neglected engines, not to mention on top of that, nonstop timing jobs on these Ford engines. So uh, I just want to give you guys a little bit of something to hold you over. And we're going to start to do teardown videos of the three, the current three Ford 3.5 liter EcoBoost engines that I have here in the shop uh, that have failed. And this is the first one. So this one, the story behind it, it's a first gen 3.5 liter EcoBoost uh, in a Ford F-150 2015, first gen, um, that has failed at 97,000 miles. You're asking why? Junk EcoBoost, Ford, junk Ford. No, it's not Ford. This guy willingly and knowingly um, neglected the engine oil and it sludged up. And then he put some BG super strong cleaner through it, trying to break up all that sludge. And things got worse from there. And at that point, the engine was toast. So before the BG service, oil service, he had timing error codes. Imagine that sludged up engine. Um, but after that, he had low compression on this bank right here, bank two, four, five, and six. Um, at that point, I knew it needed an engine, and sure enough, I'm glad I suggested an engine uh, because as you'll see, we get into it here, um, it was slushed up pretty darn bad. Uh, and then the main chain on here, at some point, for some reason, we're going to find out, slipped also. Uh, when I first pulled the one cover here, I mean, it was just dangling. So what's up with that? Uh, it's not a common failure. So let's go ahead. Uh, the valve covers are already uh, unbolted on here, so it's the front cover. Be real quick, we'll tear it down. We may or may not go into the pan. I doubt it. I think we're going to see the full story right up here. Let's get started. All right, let's start off on the passenger side here, which is bank one, cylinders one, two, and three. So this is the initial side that I pulled off for my diagnosis. After that, it was over. It's over. So you look inside of here like, ah, oh, that ain't so bad. What are you talking about, guy? Oh, oh yeah. Well, the reason why the rest of this looks clean is because that BG dynamic flush that he put through the engine oil, the really strong stuff, uh, actually washed all that stuff off of here, but it sent it down into the pan and probably plugged the pickup and everything in there. Uh, but you can see the remnants of how bad it used to be inside of there. Over here, you can see it. That's how bad it used to be all inside of here. So the BG stuff, when it was going around and around and around, could splash lubrication inside of here. Yeah, it was cleaning it off and getting it hot and cleaning it off. But yeah, it was really bad before. So the BG system might have toasted the engine, but before that, with all that sludge in here and an engine like this, with the VCT system and these fine screens like this, look how fine those screens are. I mean, it was already toast. You can see it right there. That's the inlet, the center one is the inlet right here. It's just packed in there. Uh, the other thing I noticed on this side, initially when I was messing with it, is the actual chain on here was really, really loose. Not like this. Not like this. It was like really loose. It was worse than that. So something happened with the primary tensioner or something. Uh, I don't think it's timing chain wear that's causing it to move around this much and get loose in there. That's pretty bad. Um, so let's go ahead and pull off the other side and see what's going on over here. Let's see if I can pull it one hand here. All right. So on this side, yeah, I don't know. I broke these off on here. It's going back anyways. But on this side, you can see metal flakes right where that main chain rides and would be flinging it up inside of there. You see that? So there's metal in here. And you know what's crazy is that when I first posted about this online, about these engines, uh, all three of these engines that are messed up, people are like, yeah, you just half-ass the diagnosis and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, I, I've been doing this stuff so freaking long. I don't need to charge a customer four hours to pull stuff apart to tell them your engine's toast. And here we are doing it for free after the fact um for youtube and all that stuff but man i hate when people question me i've been around so freaking long it's getting really old i tell you i think i know what i'm talking about by now and these videos do prove that 
So again, same thing on this side. Um, this side may not be as bad. You see like this with the sludge and all that stuff because this side is the clean side, uh, whereas this side is the, um, the PCV side. So fresh air comes in through here, goes into the, the head, down to the crankcase, comes out the other side, grabs all the gases and the nastiness, oil, all that stuff, vapors, all that stuff, and then it gets sucked up through this head um, and out this port through the PCV valve into the intake. So this side's gonna naturally be dirtier. The cam lobes, everything, and of course, all this muck. So that's that on that. Now, the other thing with, with a boosted engine like this is that you have turbos to worry about, turbos that are here, and the lifeblood of a turbo is the oil system. Here's the oil feed coming over. So it comes from a filter in the block right here, okay? Pressurized oil comes out, goes over, feeds the turbo, drains through here, okay? So the other thing you'll notice, here's the one turbo anyways. I mean, this thing is toast. So do you see how much oil is passing through in the turbine side here? There's a lot of oil coming through here and it's not fuel from misfiring and blah, blah. It's actually oil. The oil seal has failed inside the turbo and that happens when they get restricted. And they get restricted with all that gum, gumming and, and sludge inside of there. So again, these are decently clean because he put that BG stuff through. But before that, look how sucked in they are. And it obviously was an issue before that. Yeah. This one kind of shows it too. See how the screens are sucked in? Yeah. See some of it down in there. Didn't get cleaned by the BG stuff. So when that happened, it starved the turbos of oil and eventually they will fail like this. Otherwise, these turbos are quite, quite reliable. All right, so at this point, you can see it's whatever up here. It got basically cleaned by the BG stuff, but I wanna know what's going on with this chain, why the compression was so far off on this side, and more importantly, what is it rubbing into that's flinging that metal up into the cover on this side? So let me go ahead and pull this off. I might be able to pull it off one hand. I got a bolt still in there. I don't know. I know some of this stuff can be boring. I'm tearing it down, not talking about it, but some of it's just real life, isn't it? So let's go ahead. Should be the last bolt. And with these, these phasers are so freaking strong, you just pry against them. It's really light. And that cover will come off. You're just basically breaking the bond on there. Let's make sure we didn't miss any other bolts. Some of these bonds are really, really strong too. So we'll keep going with it. And sometimes they get stuck right here at the outlet there. Like this one probably is. Try and pull us off. Well, I got you guys here, but it ain't got cooperating. See, I think it's really stuck right there. I'm gonna have to go ahead and get that off. All right, now before this thing falls off here, I did break the seal. It was stuck around there, as usual. I wanna pull it apart with you guys, see what the heck is going on here. Holy funky monkey. Okay. <sighs> yeah. And you guys question me why it needs an engine. Yamahama. Well, we see this has come loose on here and that's fine. Oh man. It pulls up and out of the way. So again, the chains are not that common. They're not common to fail at all. Okay, they may stretch eventually, all that stuff, but they don't snap. The Ford chains do not snap. The guides, never an issue, okay? These upper ones, all that stuff. The arms, never an issue. The tensioner, I was wondering why it had so much slack in it when these tensioners, even if it did lose oil pressure, it has the ratcheting mechanism right here, so it'll hold it out, okay? It won't just collapse back in. So the fact that this sucker right here failed um, causing all this metal 
and causing the compression and the timing to be off on that bank and everything else. I mean, these are interference engines, the valves probably hitting everything. I have to do a leak down test on there just to confirm it. But you can see, look at, you look inside of here, see that? That caking inside of there? That's how the whole engine was before. You see it in there, you see it in there. That's how it was before um, they got a hold of it with the oil cleaner. There's still some oil down in there. So I don't think we need to go too much further. We're going to look at this real quick. <clears throat> I mean, this is just an absolute mess. I mean, you look at it from this point on down, it's just destruction and metal everywhere inside of the engine. And people wonder why I'm changing the engine out. Is this, is this for real? I mean, wow. So let's get over here. So that's why I was slinging all that metal into the cover. It starts wearing onto here. And of course it starts wearing into here. Oh man. Holy cow. So this one has metal in the freaking cooling system too. If it did all that, oh my God. Oh boy. Eh, maybe it's, that didn't puncture through. You can see all the rollers in there. The roller bearings are actually quite beefy. Way more beefy than I thought they'd be. There's like one right there, see it? This thing's got a crack in it too right here. See, it got a crack in it. Crack, crack. Lots of wear, lots of metal. You can see it was riding right here for a while, the chain. So the shaft goes in there, it's like a press fit. And it has those rollers on there. So this part, you know, being the one that's relying on the oil the most, actually failed. Look at that, holy cow. It's like the piece of it there. Yeah. Look at that destruction. I mean, there's metal everywhere from the chain and that. All inside this engine. They're gonna have a real time cleaning this one up. That looks okay. So this is the coolant side that pass through to both sides. And then here's just an idler. It's just an idler for it. So on the um, transversely mounted engines, Explorer, Edge, Taurus, this whole plate right here is a water pump, okay? And it has an actual uh, uh, gear on just like this, just like this gear, okay? But on the other side, it has an impeller, and that drives the coolant through there, whereas these uh, F-150 ones, they do not have that. So what are they going to use in the place of that? An idler. Shaft, bearings, idler. So yeah, that's, wow, that's what failed and put this metal all throughout and caused the chain to slip and probably a contacting of valves. These are interference engines. So the way it is, is that Ford the, uh, timing belt engines are non-interference and just about every one of their chain driven engines are considered interference engines, which means when the timing's too far off, the valves can kiss the top side of the pistons. Wow, I just can't get over that how bad that is. I mean, that was just, I mean, that didn't happen immediately either. This is going on for a while. And it's all oil starvation. It's, that's what all this stuff is that's going on here. Man, this is not good. Let's look down here real quick, see if we can see anything down in there. Carbon. Nothing special. It's pretty much normal. Even if this mileage is normal. They're all down just a little bit. You see them? That's interesting. So yeah, that's, I don't, I don't think we need to go any further. Like, like I said, 
whale starvation, took out the turbos and the valve train and took all this out right here and then everything just went through the pan. I'm sure that pickup does not look pretty. No matter how much cleaner you put through it for all that sludge, all this metal and garbage and the sludge that didn't break down is plugging that pickup and it just, it just cycles over and over again. And it just gets worse and worse the longer you drive it. Wow, so this one was a nasty one for sure. One thing we didn't look at is this glue cover. So this, that cleaner did a good job. This is not how an engine like this looks, no matter what. Uh, well, it never looked this good on the inside there. So this is all the cleaner doing that, but you can see where it didn't touch or couldn't get lubrication splashed onto it. Wow. So that's where that, here's the outlet right there. And that's where that idler's at. And it's just grinding for how long, putting metal into there. And then here's the chain that is now free to move. And either way, and this way it was heading towards the cover. Wow. Yeah, this one's definitely done for. I don't know if you can see anything down here. Nothing really. It's all open in there. There's no baffle on these. It's built into the cradle on there. Very cool though. Very interesting. I knew this one was bad, bad news, uh, even though it only had uh, 97,000 miles on it. And sure enough, I was right. It's bad, bad news.